thank you for joining me and my, my wife, Hu Pinghua, at our farewell reception online. In December 2009, I was appointed New China's 11th ambassador to the UK. In February 2010, I arrived in London to take up my post. Now I've been working and living in the UK for 11 years. This is the longest and the last tour of my diplomatic career of 47 years. It has been an honor to be the longest serving Chinese ambassador, both in the history of China-UK relations and of all Chinese ambassadors of all time. I will cherish the memory deeply for the rest of my life. These 11 years have seen tremendous changes in both China and the world. As the President Xi Jinping said, the world is experiencing profound changes and seen in the century. In these 11 years, I've witnessed historic leaps in China's development, a new era for socialism with the Chinese characteristics, historic changes in the relations between China and the rest of the world, and up and downs and twisted turns in China-UK relations. Here in the UK, I witnessed the four general elections and two referendums. I've observed the entire process of the UK leaving the EU and embarking on the journey of building a global Britain. And I have the honor of working with, among others, four British prime ministers and six foreign secretaries. I've been to all corners of the UK, from Yale of Shetland Islands in the north to the Channel Islands in the south, from England to Scotland, from Northern Ireland to Wales, and from the Crown dependencies to overseas territories. I have worked with the people from all walks of life in this country to advance China-UK cooperation across the board. Together, I have made over 700 speeches, contributed more than 170 articles to mainstream newspapers, and had over 170 interviews with the mainstream media. As President Xi Jinping said, if you never forget why, where you started, you can accomplish your mission. At an interview with a British magazine diplomat 11 years ago upon arrival, I used the acronym IDEA, I-D-E-A, to describe my missions as the Chinese ambassador to the UK. I is for interest. I will work to expand the common interest of China and the UK. D is for dialogue. I will promote dialogue, which is always better than confrontation. E is for exploration. I will provide facilitation for our two sides to explore new areas of cooperation. And A is for accommodation. I will highlight the principles of mutual respect, understanding, and accommodation in our bilateral relations. For the past 11 years, I have kept these missions in mind and worked tirelessly with the people from all sectors in the UK to bring China-UK relations forward. First, our common interests have grown. The pie is getting bigger and bigger. In the past 11 years, China-UK trade in goods almost doubled with the British export to China increasing by about 20 times, making China the third largest export for British export of goods. 
Chinese investment in the UK has surged by about 20 times. The UK is now the second largest destination in Europe for Chinese investment. Hinkley Pond C nuclear power plant has been the largest single investment from China in Europe and become a flagship project of China-UK cooperation. There have been many firsts in China-UK financial cooperation. The UK was the first major Western country to issue RMB sovereign bond, the first to join Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. London also witnessed the issuance of the first Chinese RMB sovereign bond outside China. London is now the world's largest offshore RMB exchange center and the second largest offshore RMB clearing center. A total clearing volume has exceeded 50 trillion RMB yuan. The Shanghai London Stock Connect was officially launched connecting for the first time the Chinese capital market with a foreign one and enabling many Chinese companies to benefit from London's world-class financial services. China and the UK are also committed to working together to promote the high-quality development of Belt and Road Initiative, and we have signed an agreement on cooperation in third market. Second, China and the UK have more dialogue mechanism for exchanging views at top level. Leaders of our two countries have maintained communication and, and exchanges, and this provides driving forces for the growth of China-UK relations. In the past 11 years, China and the UK have held five sessions of the Prime Minister's meeting five sessions of strategic dialogue and eight sessions of economic and financial dialogue. Our two countries also launched the high-level people-to-people dialogue and high-level security dialogue. The definite highlight of these exchanges was President Xi Jinping's super state visit to the UK in 2015. This milestone event for historic significance, ushered in the China-UK golden era and left an indelible mark in the history of China-UK relations. Third, China and the UK have explored broader areas of international cooperation. In face of ever-changing international situation, China and the UK have enhanced coordination under the framework of various international organizations, such as the UN and the G20. We share growing consensus in supporting multilateralism and free trade, opposing unilateralism and protectionism, and addressing global challenges such as climate change. We have also maintained communication and coordination on international and regional hotspot issues. In recent years, our two countries have worked vigorously to promote cooperation on climate response and green development. Later this year, China and the UK will host COP15 and COP26 respectively. Our two sides are now working on synergy between the two conferences to make them both successful so as to enhance cooperation on climate response, promote green development, and take the lead in global governance on the environment. Fourth, China and the UK have enhanced mutual respect, trust, and common accommodation, but daunting task still remain. Thanks to the concerted efforts of the people from all walks of life in both countries, China and the UK have deepened mutual understanding and cemented public support for bilateral relations. In the past 11 years, annual mutual visits between our two countries have doubled, reaching 2 million. The number of Chinese students in the UK also doubled, reaching 220,000. 
The UK has become the top destination for Chinese students who want to study overseas. Fruitful results have been achieved in exchanges and cooperation in areas of culture, science and technology and innovation. The UK was the first country to sign the joint strategy for science, technology and innovation cooperation with China. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, the peoples of our two countries have come to each other's aid and tackle the difficulties together. There have been numerous touching moments. China and the UK differ in political system, development stage, history and culture. It is natural that we do not always see eye to eye. China-UK relationship has not always been smooth sailing in the past 11 years. But the history of China-UK relations tells us that when the principles of mutual respect and equality are followed, when international law and basic norms governing state-to-state -state relations are observed, the China-UK relationship will transcend differences and move forward along the right track. At the moment, the worst pandemic in a hundred years is ravaging the world, precipitating the profound changes and seen in a century and bring deep adjustment to the international landscape. The world is facing an important choice between cooperation and confrontation, between dialogue and division, between openness and the closeness. Against such backdrop, China and the UK, as major countries of global influence, show the important mission of safeguarding world peace and development. I sincerely hope that China and the UK will see the big picture, <coughs> follow the MAC trend, and work with each other in the same direction a sound and stable China-UK relationship will benefit the people of both countries and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, as I'm about to leave the UK, I've received warm letters from many British friends. I thank you for your recognition of my work in promoting China-UK exchanges and cooperation. I also appreciate your best wishes to me, Pinghua, and my family. I'm deeply touched. Many beautiful moments keep coming back. They remind me of the work I've done for better China-UK relations and the friends I've made and worked together towards this goal. They will be my sweetest and most deeply cherished memories. I would like to express my most sincere thanks to all the friends who have cared for and supported China's development and China-UK friendship, and who have provided support and assistance to me in my work in the past 11 years. My thanks also go to my colleagues in the embassy over the past 11 years, I worked with the six deputy heads of mission and hundreds of diplomats and staff. They represent the best of the Chinese diplomatic team. Each one of them is remarkable. I would not have achieved anything without their dedication and efficiency. Last but not least, I would like to say a big thank you to my wife, Wu Pinghua. Her understanding and support are my source of strength. If I've achieved anything, she would be the secret to the success. Now I'd like to invite her to make a few remarks. Time flies. We have been in the UK for 11 years. This is longer than I had ever lived anywhere else. 
the memories of our time in the UK will surely be cherished for the rest of my life. I'm certainly happy that we are going back home, but I also feel sad to leave this country and the friends I have come to know so well. I would like to say thanks, thank you to friends from all walks of life who have supported my husband in his work over the past decade and more. I hope you will continue supporting China-UK relations and bring this important relationship forward. I look forward to an enjoyable retirement. I hope my husband will be able to slow down just a bit and relax. People say a lifetime has three stages, each comprising 30 years. The first 30 years, starting from one's birth, are for learning and for growth. They are the bronze 30s. The second 30s, from 30 to 60, are for hard work. They are the silver 30s. The third 30 years, from 60 to 90, of course, many people live longer than that, are the golden 30s. My husband and I are, very, are both very much looking forward to our golden 30s. We will be leaving the UK soon. I will miss you all, my dear friends in the UK. I will cherish our friendship forever. Thank you. Thank you, Pingfa. Ladies and gentlemen, Shakespeare said, welcome ever smiles and the farewell goes out sighing. I'm reluctant to say farewell, but at the same time, I'm pleased that I have accomplished my mission, served my country, and worked for China-UK relations with all my heart from the beginning to the end. It is my sincere hope that China-UK friendship will last forever. China-UK cooperation will become deeper and wider, and China-UK relations will go steady and go far. In 17 days, we'll celebrate the Chinese New Year and ring in the Year of the Hawks. I wish everyone online today a happy, healthy, and prosperous Year of the Hawks. Thank you.